Hi guys, today I wanted to explain how an OBC is made and uh, in this video I will treat just the first part which talks about uh, the PFC that design so this is the, PFC, the, the, the PFC in the grid side and in the part one, as I said before, I will just realize this circuit here in the second part I will uh, realize instead the other one so what are basically the problem and what are the basically the problem in this topology and why you, do, you, do you need a, a PFC? So what is a PFC in general? So uh, basically the, um, the very very problem, the basic problem is uh, at the input side you have an AC voltage like here and uh, after the rectification uh, after the after the after the the, the rectification bridge if you put if you don't have a resistive load so something that uh, behaves like a resistive load there will be some lag between the voltage and the current and and this does not produce the maximum output power so this is the voltage and this is the current if instead you have something that's behave like a resistor voltage and current will be in phase will be in phase naturally with different values since the it will be applied the ohm law v equal v equals r times i but they will be in phase so the pfc basically what it does is to force the output so the so the pfc you have your grass bridge and the PFC here, which stands for power factor corrector, will force the output to be, will force, will behave like a resistive load and will force the output to be a sign. Sorry, sorry, will force the, will force the input to be a sign. And uh, if you, you're using the PFC as a boost, after the, after the boost converter, you will have basically a DC voltage with uh, some ripple at uh, 100 Hz because the grid side have 50 Hz as frequency of switching frequency sorry as a frequency of the sign so basically here you have 100 Hz as a ripple so we expect a ripple at the boost converter to have a ri uh, we expect a, a DC voltage with a ripple at uh, 100 Hz. Now, since this will be a uh, uh, greater than one kilowatt, uh, the power will be greater than one kilowatt, uh, and mostly will be even four kilowatt. Uh, you will need a, a parallel boost topology. So let's start. So let's start with uh, the PFC. So let's start by designing the. Uh, PSC in our OBC converter. So we will use a sign here and most of the time you will have a series resistor on one million and also a transformer. Yeah, because you don't want to put all, you, you put everything on the grid but there will be some like a transformer in your net. Zero offset, uh, 350 volts, and 50 Hz as frequency. Now let's put a reduction transformer and let's couple these two inductors with factor equal to 1. Once these, two, once these two inductors are coupled, you see that a dot has appeared, meaning that the, the current will enter in one dot and exit the other dot. So now what you want to put, now what you want to do is to put the Graltz bridge. Let's choose a, a proper diode, a Schottky diode, which can sustain and high breakdown voltage is suitable enough. And, le and let's choose also thirty amps as 
rectification as average current rectified. So let's put the, all this diode here, here, and here. These two will be grounded, and these two will be connected to the capacitance of 10 millifarad. Let's connect the Graz bridge. So, before going on, I think that we should test this stage. Let's ground the load of one 10 ohms. And let's call this in as stands for the input voltage of our boost. Let's run the simulation for 50 milliseconds. I don't know why it opened three panels. There is no reason for, for this. So you have the sign at the input, you have the, the lower, sorry, you have the lower uh, sign of uh, uh, at the second transform at the second side of the, of the transformer, and you expect a bit of uh, you expect a rectification. Okay, that is good. If you toggle the the load, it will be constant. But by the way, now you want to put this in a this in a boost converter. So let's use a boost converter, but uh, this time I will use a double boost, a parallel boost converter configuration. What does that mean? Uh, as you can see in the paint, you see that the boost topology, there are two, two boost topology put in parallel. So basically the current will flow first here, behaving like a boost converter in the two different sides, phases, and the other current will go here, and the output current will be the summation of the two, of this of the branch one and the branch two. So why are you doing this? Basically because uh, since there is a really high power, you don't want to stress so much this inductance. You could put two inductance of uh, uh, 50, 50 micro henry with uh, uh, 50 amps, for instance, which uh, can be uh, easy to find, but if instead you use just one boost, you should put, for instance, uh, just one inductor with uh, 100 amps. And uh, inductors like these are very expensive and uh, hard to find. So for this reason, you employ uh, more boost put in parallel, just to stress less the inductors and to find less expensive components. Obviously, this uh, will result in a, a bigger, in a bigger circuit, but in a, in a way, this is the, the, how the state of the art works. So let's put uh, two boost converters. This will be the first boost, and this is the, and this will be the second boost. And let's put uh, a reasonably high inductor value, like. Uh, 47 micro henry and let's choose a proper inductor of 47 micro henry these are now let's put the boost converter So this will be my secondary boost converter. Sorry. Let's use a proper MOSFET, by the way.
as you can see in this config you can even put three uh, you can put even another boost converter just by copying this and by putting another inductance below let's just use two but uh, you got the picture so the way you can control these two boost is the following i will use just an open control boost because if you could if i had to make even the control this video will be infinite so let's use a, a pulse here this will be our loss add pulse dot param d equal to 0 0.5 so we expect double the voltage of the output and switch a frequency of 100 kilohertz and since there is the, since the, this is a synchronous configuration you want also that, that at the time of 150 nanoseconds just nano is enough let's put the output voltage uh, sorry output let's put the pulse 0 5 volts yeah should be enough uh, for the low side nothing 10 nano 10 nano t on equal to d over fs minus dead and the period is 1 over fs switch so this will be the high uh, so this will be the low side let's call it uh, a1 and put it there and also let's put also a2 By the way, these are the same. I'm just I I just creating another supply voltage because I don't want to put nothing in parallel, but they, they are the same. Uh, let me order the circuit for a bit. Yeah, this is stupid by the way, if I rotate the voltage, you should also rotate the text as well. Don't understand why Spice doesn't do that, but anyway. The I side will be basically the same, but with the difference, <coughs> you call this B1, and let's call this VC1. This will be VC2, which stands for the VC1 and VC2. Remember that these are high side switches, so they need always the, um, the source. And now these, uh, um, these switches, these voltages needs to be delayed by D over FS switch. And naturally, the time which are on are opposite to the, uh, are opposite to the, um, to the low side, to the low side switches. So that basically that when uh, when uh, one is when uh, when one is on the other will be off let's just copy and paste now if for any reason this synchronous config synchronous configuration does not work i will not waste any time and put the diode instead <laughs> okay but I prefer the synchronous configuration because uh, it is less uh, uh, it has uh, uh, less uh, power consumption so it is preferable. Let's put uh, a big output capacitance here and a load. Then ohm. Let's call this node output voltage. And let's shrink and let's shrink the circuit a bit. Uh, A1, B1, A2, A2. No, this is wrong. This is called B2. And this is not B1, but this is B2. Okay, now it's VC1, VC2, out. 
let's check me a bit for a moment okay now everything should work let me draw just a bit so this is a AC to DC and this is instead non isolated dc dc step up uh it's a bit big okay uh this is non isolated the dc step up yes because as you can see in the in the slide you see that the 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 second dc dc that i'm going to, to make in uh, the second part of the video it has to be isolated because uh, since you have uh, a very high voltage and uh, also high power you need isolation for naturally uh, for safety purposes and so the second stage of the dc dc converter will be isolated so now let's run the simulation and see what happens Oh my god, incorrect use of curly brasses V4, B2, VC1, uh, D minus dead. No, sorry, my uh, my keyboard is uh, my keyboard is uh, as an hard press, and so sometimes this happens. Sorry for that. Let's run again. No, by the way, this is wrong. 1 minus D over F switch. Okay, now it is correct. Let's run again. No, 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 this is going to crash, this is going to crash, this is going to crash. No, 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 no. Okay. Let let me cancel uh I don't know, I didn't understand the right. What the fuck? Uh, this is completely unexpected. Okay, let me check what is going on because this is completely unexpected. Stop, 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 stop. This, this does not make any sense. Uh, maybe this guy is... Ah, because D is 0 0.5. Yes, it is correct. 0 0.5, it is correct. I need a greater... I need a greater voltage, for sure. VC1... VC1, VC2, okay, this is correct, A1, A2, 10 million, and the ground. Ah, this is A2, okay, this is called B2, and this is called B1. So, uh, remember that whenever you're using the net, remember that... Uh, you always need to check the nets because uh, something something like this may have okay now it is okay now it is correct <laughs> okay now it is correct the net were shorted for uh, because the the names were the same so we can uh, we can start to see what is going to, what is going on so let, let let's see all the all, all the net ratification So uh, here you here we have 
the input voltage, which is stepped down to with the transformer. Then we have this input voltage here, which is a little bit rectified, but also distorted, and the output of the boost converter, which, as you can see, it is basically doubling the input voltage of our rectifier. So, uh, what is going on here exactly? Uh, you have two kind of ripples. The first ripple is owing to the presence of the 100 hertz of the 50 hertz of the of the grid side, and the other ripple is owing to the switching frequency of the converter. You can see that this ripple here by superimposing the input the input rectification here and as you can see if you put the negative part rectified you see that you have um you see that the, the ripple is owing to the uh, 50 hertz of the grid side now imagine that this function has the absolute value let's put uh, if i remember correctly abs So if, I, if you do the absolute value, you see that the more or less the input voltage is owing to this. Uh, so now let's check the, uh, the, the power of our converter. As you can see, it has even a peak of 5 kilowatt and more or less 4 kilowatt as a power ripple. As power, yes, as, as power ripple. Now, what we wanted to study is uh, we wanted to, to see exactly what's going on in the, the in our converter with the ripple, and so we need to skip the transient. So let's use uh, uh, so let's start time semi data to uh, fifty to sixty milliseconds, and let's stop it to eighty milliseconds. The reason I'm doing this because if you if you study now the the tra the, um, the the FFT of the circuit you will see something which is not right, okay? Since, uh, um, since you want to study at, uh, at the end of the transient. So let's delete this panel and let's study the FFT as always. Now let's wait for a bit because I'm simulating the circuit for 80 milliseconds. So as you can see, I'm, so as you can see, yeah, we have, you, you have the AC, DC, and the DC DC step up converter. In the second part of the video, I will put a full bridge rectifier with another DC DC converter and another transformer. And then we will see what is going on. So basically, the output of the converter, the, this output here, will become the input of the next DC DC converter. And since the full bridge recti and since the full bridge is able even to sustain 10 kilowatts. Uh, hundred of kilowatts, it should be fine in our project. So now it is just plotting the, the final 20 milliseconds. As you can see, you have uh, a ripple. You don't have to be scared about this, this ripple here, because it will be basically, in real life, uh, you won't have such big ripple. Now let's see the um, the FFT and let's put it to linear. We should expect, ah uh, oh yeah, exactly. As you can see, we have uh, we have a big ripple at uh, 100 100 hertz because of the grid side rectification, and then it is replied even at uh, other frequencies. Uh, there is a, uh, there is another kind of ripple which is at 100 kilohertz. Maybe you don't see it. Be at two hundred. Yeah, because it is it is filtered by it is filtered by no 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 you see it no no now you see it. So there is still a bit of ripple. It is uh, uh, owing to the presence of the switching frequency. And uh, how can you see this ripple? Well, basically, you have to zoom, for instance, here, 
Okay, this is uh, this is the ripple. As you can see, this is the ripple owing to the switching frequency, and uh, you can verify this uh, by putting the cursor here. And you see that uh, between these two, there are there is uh, 100 kilohertz frequency, and this is owing to the presence uh, of the um, of the of the DC DC converter PSC. If I put the uh, VC voltage here. You see that you should expect to follow the square wave used in the rectification. Now, if you go into the detail, you see that the you can see the effect of the dead time in the VC square wave. As you can see, there is a big, a bit of uh, uh, rectangle here, and this is owing to the presence of the dead time. In fact, if I put this and this, you will see that the blank space left by the dead time has uh, a little bit of damage in the square waveform at the node voltage. And it is given by this peak, this low peak here. Let me divide it by... And so, with this, we have analyzed everything. The only thing left to do is to analyze the switching current. Is to analyze, yes, the switching current. So the current coming out from here is not so high as expected, but it is still divided with this two inductor. So the first inductor will take 90 amps, 9 amps, and the other inductor will take the other one. So at the end of the story, here you have... Ah yes, we can increase. We can increase. By the way, the <laughs> we can go a bit wild in our circuit, and we can increase also the um, the load. So now I, I will be asking a very high, very high current. So let me put just three ohms as a load, and I will show you that this inductor will still hold. Uh, let me uh, reduce the transient for a bit, just for 40 milliseconds. No, 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 this is going to crash, this is going to crash again. So the output voltage still remains the same. But pay attention that this time the current uh, is way higher, 81 amps, so the out whoa <laughs> so the output power is 60 kilowatt and as you can see the current which is rectified here in some time after the transient is ending it can be very high It can be very, very high. For distance here, just 6 amps. But in this interval here, you even have something very, very big. So for this reason, you will need... Uh, by the way, this has become a uh, way too high, a way too high converter. For As you can see, if you have a 60 kilowatt converter, two boosts are, are not enough. You should use another boost instead. So let's end the video for now and let's you and let's see you in the second part of the video. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.